Well, good morning. It is Wednesday morning. It's a little earlier here in Hawaii. Um, so I'm in my room, so I don't wake the rest of the house up. Although I think they're already stirring and getting ready for work. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> um, I have been talking a lot and posting a lot about trust because that's what God's been speaking to me about. <clears throat> Good morning, honey. My husband just jumped on. So, um, trust, yeah, God's been speaking to me a lot about trust and trusting him and trusting his timing and stuff like that. And this morning, um, as I was talking to the Lord, he brought me to um, 2 Corinthians, where in chapter 12, Paul is talking about um, the thorn in his flesh. And so I want to read that scripture. So it starts, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, you can read the whole chapter, but I'm just going to start in verse 7 through 10. And it says, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should exalt, be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord, thrice that it might depart from me and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore will i rather glory in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me therefore i take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches in necessities in persecutions in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Well, now that's a whole mouthful and you could actually give several sermons based off of those four scriptures. But I just want to say that Paul had, uh, Paul had a thorn in his flesh. And I am assuming that was a trial. That was something that was going on in his life that caused him so much anguish and pain that he sought the Lord three times and said, please take this from me. Move it. Take it away. I don't want to deal with it. Get it out of my life. And the response he got from the Lord was, my grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in weakness. So what is grace? Grace is unmerited favor. So it's the favor of God upon our lives that we do not deserve to have. But nonetheless, we are given that grace. So how does that tie in to trusting God? Well, when you're being buffeted, when your flesh is being buffeted, when you have all of these things coming at you, when you have a thorn or multiple thorns in your flesh, that's when we tend to seek God, right? I mean, we all seek the Lord, but let's just be honest. In times of extreme trials and tribulations and thorns, we seek Him more. I mean, we're on our face. We are on our knees. We are petitioning. We're praying. We're doing whatever we can to get the breakthrough, breakthrough that we need. And so... You know, in that beginning, and even if you go up and read from verse 4 and stuff, but Paul is saying here that lest he should be exalted above measure. So that, again, is a whole separate thing. But basically he's saying he doesn't want to be exalted above, you know. And sometimes things are allowed in our lives to keep us in that place of remembering that we need God, um, of trusting God, of relying on the grace of God to be upon our lives so that we know he is our strength and where our strength comes from. Sometimes we can look to people and think, oh man, they're so strong in the Lord. Oh, you know, they can give good words. They're, they're fluent in talking, da, 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 whatever, giving prophetic words. I want to be like that. And we exalt the person instead of seeing the gift in the person that has come from God. So I'm saying we all have gifts and talents, and those have come from God. God created us with gifts and talents. He didn't just create us to be whatever. 
on the face of the earth. We were all created for a plan and a purpose. But we need to seek God to know what that is. And so when we're trusting God for things, and when we are going through the fire, when we are being tested, when our faith is being pushed to the end, when we feel like we are being pushed to the end, when we feel like our emotions are so raw that it feels like an open wound with sand being poured on it. I think that's kind of a good analogy of what Paul may have meant by a thorn in the flesh. Then we need to remember that God's grace is sufficient. His favor, his unmerited favor, his favor for us, it's sufficient. For everything that we go through, for everything that we do, God's grace is all we need. It's sufficient for us, sufficient for the day, sufficient for the trial. You know, this thorn in the flesh that Paul was asking God to remove, God said, my grace is sufficient for it. It's sufficient. So everything that we go through, God's grace is sufficient for it. You know, his favor is sufficient. So you're going through something, know that the favor of God is upon your life. That's his grace. It's upon your life and his favor will move mountains to bring you through. Because no, the war's already been won. It's just the battle you're in. And trusting God in that battle, trusting God in that season, trusting God in the still moments, trusting God when you're not hearing him at all, knowing that his favor, his grace is still upon your life and is sufficient. And then his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So sometimes I feel like I'm not strong enough to do certain things or go through certain things. But God says that in my weakness, he is made strong. And God says this here. That's God speaking. But you got to open it to know what he says. God says that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. God says I can do all things through Christ Jesus. God says he has given me all power and all authority and all dominion. God says I am fearfully and wonderfully made in his image. God says, I am the apple of his eye. And I don't know about you, but when you have kids, for us mamas out there, when somebody tries to touch your kid or your grandkids or whatever have you, lioness comes out, right? Because they're the apple of our eyes and of our eye. And the same with God. He's the father. He's your daddy. He's our, he's our dad. He's our father he's he's God but he's more than that he's personal and he wants a relationship with us this is not about a religion it's about a relationship with the almighty God king father maker of the heavens and earth creator of everything that you your eyes behold and he wants a personal relationship with you and me and as my pastor here in Hawaii would say us and we. <laughs> and that only comes by reading his word and spending time with him and getting to know him. So I'm going to encourage you again today <laughs> to get to know the Lord. Get in his word. Sit with him. Spend time with him. Let the Holy Spirit speak. You know, Jesus came and died so that for once and for all, we were all redeemed um, and had a place reserved for us in heaven. Know that whatever you're going through, God's grace, his favor is enough for whatever it is. Trust him in it. Trust his timing. Trust his grace and favor upon your life and know that when you are weak, he is strong. Amen. That's all I have for this morning, and I pray that you all would have a blessed, amazing day. And if you're watching, I 
the only comment I see is my husband's. I'm so sorry. If, any, if anybody's commenting, I can't see it. I will respond to it once I'm done with the live. And if you're watching the replay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I pray that you all would be blessed today and for the rest of the week. Thanks for watching, babe. I love you. Thank you, everyone. I love you all. God bless you.